first video didn't come out good for some reason. So I said, let me start over. I have passed by four uh, different fast food places and there are lines galore. <laughs> and it's amazing. Actually, let's see if I could. This is a line people waiting to get into uh, what is it called? Start with a C. Um, can't think of it, but anyway, it's a place where they <laughs> where they, where they just selling uh, frozen sugar, and it's 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 just amazing how people have masks on, but yet they're feeding themselves the exact crap that actually destroys their system it's really amazing i mean the line is i i, I just passed by um popeye's chicken hey donovan hey orma just passed by popeye's chicken and there was a line the place is like almost by the corner there was a line all the way around the corner and people have masks on, but yet they're, they're just feeding their bodies the, the toxins and the disease and the crap with the masks on, like, like they're gonna get protected. How you doing, Rosalind? Hey, Dan yet. How you doing, Dan yet? How you doing, Rose? It's, it's, it's just, I don't know, it just blows my mind, the psychology. You're so concerned about not getting the virus, but yet you're feeding yourself poison that actually causes your immune system to be compromised. Make any sense, y'all? Let's, let's eat the poison, let's eat the disease, let's eat the crap. <laughs> while we wear the mask like that's going to save us when you're putting everything on the inside of you to destroy your inside and your outside <laughs> it's amazing and um what's that Carl what's the what's the ice cream store it starts with a C is it Caravel or something I don't know I don't even eat. I don't eat there, so I have no idea. But it's it's ridiculous. Now I did a session earlier because um, I only I could only have about thirty people on this platform that was testing out, and uh, quite a few folks responded, and it was about sex. <laughs> Are you getting enough? Now, it's not like y'all think, uh, but it is a really good teaching talking about sex. We don't hear that. We, we don't talk about that subject. Hey, good. How's the, how's the family? Yeah, I'm having good. Good, good. I'll see you. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Um, we, I did a session early. I'm going to do another one. So if you're interested, because I'm using a different platform, because um, this is what the Lord gave me, and um, talking about sex. Are you getting... Now, suppose you're single. Or suppose you're married. Um, but you need to come on, because it, it's nothing like you think. And when you get this part right, it makes all the other parts completely right. And I'm convinced without a shadow of a doubt, the reason why there's so many challenges in the, in the physical aspect is because we never got taught the spiritual side of sex and sexuality, which is so vital, so important. And um, that should be 
a deal breaker for for many meaning because <laughs> because if you if, if you're not going to come to agreement and, and I'm gonna tell you something you need to understand something about your own self before you even think about sex with somebody else a lot of you have a lot of stuff a lot of junk and it's funny because I thought I thought more people would have I thought more people would have responded to that subject but some people didn't respond to that subject because they don't want to deal with a generational family tree actually I I had opened it up to, even to my congregation we were doing something like spiritual trees and I got like I'm, a, I'm, I'm not gonna even deal I'm not gonna even really deal with them no more on that subject except people who already responded to me because this is a very touchy issue and some people don't want to deal and look at the tree because some people got some people got messed up when they were a child um, some people got messed over by their father some their mothers, some their brothers, their sisters, their cousins. Um, I just did just did a session, just finished. I was taking a break because I needed a breather from that. Because uh, I was really surprised. The Lord told me to do. I was really surprised. And again, we dealt we dealt more on, on, on some issues, not just dealing with which what you guys actually might be thinking of. Because before you deal with anything like penetration and all that, you got to deal with sex on a much deeper level. Otherwise, you'll find that you have a temporary fix, but a permanent destruction going on. And then you just have patterns going on. And then you'll have... This is why a lot of folks, when they get older... Uh, they lose the desire because not did they really lose the desire. They, lo they lose the energy to keep up with the story that they've been faking for years. Because just like money, actually, actually money and sex go hand in hand. Because that's the physical part. But there's something that goes deeper. You find a lot of people have challenges with money. Sex begins to be a challenge. Um, and this is just what it is because we don't really understand the true nature of money, which is not physical. Money is really spiritual. You just get the manifestation and the demonstration manifesting physically when you've mastered the spiritual side. I call it spiritual economics. And all this goes hand in hand with sexuality, with sex, and what, what y'all call physical dollars. It goes hand in hand. It's a behavior and it's also spirit. Um, <laughs> what should I say? I don't want to say too much without giving the secrets because I would really like to do it in a group setting. So if you're really interested in this, I might come back on tonight. I'm not doing this through the other platforms, uh, the conference call and all that. And there's a reason for it. Because my eyes... And this works really good if you have a webcam. My eyes need to see your eyes. <laughs> um, yeah, see, because when we on the phone, like my conference calls, I'm about to change all that. Actually, I'm about to rewrite life completely. Um, and some of you'll, you'll see. I'm actually working on it. I'm about to set some, some new structures up with the temple and have a special group that I'm going to be working with. And then in June, 
God is really going to actually uh, raise up our wellness community because we got some folks that's coming. And um, we want to send them out of this place, the Temple of Radiant Light. We want to send them out of this place. When I say out of this place, because I'm actually facing the temple right now, which is right there on my way to the Temple of Radiant Light. We want to send these folks out as healing evangelists. And um, I'm looking forward to that. And I know the enemy's trying to do everything to bring disruption to this, but it ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. See, when you done been, when you have, <clears throat> yes, Natasha, rewrite life. I'm about to rewrite life, re -light, re rewrite ministry, rewrite some of everything. Cause what's not working for you, you need to rewrite it. <laughs> yeah, but y'all ever hear the, the saying, back to the back to the drawing board? You need some 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 of y'all need to go back to the drawing board. Okay. Um, something that hasn't worked is not working for you. And um, I'm realizing some things just not working. Going back to the drawing board. And you need to review and rewrite life. Hey, um, Pastor Asaph, and you need to know exactly what it is that God has called you to. That's the first thing you need to know. And if you're not sure what God has called you to, then um, you need to take some time and do old-fashioned fasting and prayer and seek the mind of the Lord. What is the, what is the direction that God is actually uh, that, you know, pushing you towards. Um, this is vital. This is really vital, very important. So, I j again, I was just amazed of seeing people in line. How many, how many of you can take the truth, like no matter how raw it comes? Or, or, or some of you, you are you so sanctimonious and so-called holy that first of all, you don't want to be listening to me. <laughs> you really don't want to listen to me because uh, I'll burn your ears off your head uh, if you can't take truth. How many, how many of you can really take truth? Everybody put rewrite life. That was my theme for the year. I need to get more lights up here. That was my theme for the beginning of the year. I told my congregation that and the Lord began to uh, show us right after I said that, how on track that is to rewrite life. I'm gonna look to see how many more people want to deal on this subject. Now, you might be single. You might not be, you know, might not be married. You might be married. Uh, you need to email me, bishop at bishopwomack.com. I'll set my computer up right now. And uh, let's see if you could take truth. Because um, I know when I was coming up in church, um, single, uh, I had a real challenge in the area of sex. And I, when I say a challenge, I, I didn't have a challenge getting it up. <laughs> I, had, I had that kind of challenge. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I have no challenge like that. All right. Still to this day, in this moment at 61. Um, I'm hearing folks at age 30 telling me that they haven't challenged. <clears throat> um, what I heard, and I think because that was what my leader heard, was you just ain't supposed to do it. And that was it. Um, Y'all not supposed to do it till you get married. Okay. <laughs> That's the eight stuff. Because he had no challenge. Eat well here, hey, no challenge in that area. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying. Um, but it was very, it was very limited to 
Sorry for that. It was very limited to what you do. Um, and because of being very limited what you do, you just make sure you kept doing the do of what you felt you needed to do because your flesh was just screaming out and crying out. Um, it, 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 no matter how many times the evangelist came to the church um, or there was a revival and you went down to the altar and said, Lord, forgive me. And then uh, right after service that night, you just went and did it again. So we're not really taught what to do except don't do it. And then, um, <laughs> then, then a lot of folks, after they uh, go ahead and get married, now it's now it's less. <laughs> I got saved that night. Y'all see Pastor Asa? That's my brother. So you got, you know, um, I might I I might have got saved maybe five million times. Who knows? <laughs> Of what we what what we knew of in that what let me put it this way because I can't talk to y'all about what you did um, about what I knew the best that I knew and I wanted to live right wanted to live holy whatever that meant you know um, back then living right living holy was like you know not screwing and didn't get to the point man get this this not working. <laughs> Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Or y'all just listening to all my business? Okay. Uh, and, you, you know, you just got up and direct the choir. And, you know, you wanted to make sure you had no sin consciousness. And you wanted to have a clear conscience while you direct the choir or you, or you uh, led praise and worship. And this is not a subject we hear in the church. And even those who say that they're, you know, they're talking about it. They're really not talking about it. They're playing with the subject. Um, be holy. But what does that mean? Like some people are not really telling us what what is being holy. Me, I can I can um, not have sex. Being single doesn't mean that I'm holy. I might be holding out for a moment, but does that mean that I'm holy because I didn't have sex? <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? Um, yeah, we we we're taught to sin, sneak sneaky. Um, we're taught to sin, yes, inappropriately. We're almost forced, even though, don't don't take this completely as I'm saying it, because because some of you you'll go overboard, but we almost forced into sin even though nobody makes you sin nobody all right a woman can get butt naked and put her behind right up to you that doesn't force you it could tempt you it could push you it could be very hard hot <laughs> all that hard hot all that stuff but again it is always the decision of the individual so i'll, I'll tell y'all this now um should I tell y'all this? Or should I just save it? Uh, let's look at the S in sex. Okay. Most of us have not, when we think of sex, we think of intercourse. <laughs> Dr. A says, say glory. <laughs> uh, um. It's funny because I laugh. I mean, whether he whether he admits this or not, a lot of times some of the same females we it would be like almost like an exchange. <laughs> ah, it is crazy, y'all. Uh, it's it's amazing when you young the things that you used to do. How crazy I see Apostle Curdy or Apostle Curdy. You know what I'm talking about? Because uh, he used to be in his choir at King College. And um, there was a lot of females. <laughs> I don't even know if he knew. Uh, there was a lot of females in that in that choir. Uh, my God, I was like the pipe piper. <laughs> the pipe piper in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pastor Asa said he had issues, too. <laughs> no, not Pastor Curdy. 
He was in the choir. He was singing for the Lord. He didn't have no issues. And this is funny, you know. Um, I can laugh about this now. This wasn't this was really funny then, not to me. But this, seriously, in your church, because some of y'all went to different churches. Rose said, you told us a long time ago what we can think up, we can think down. That's true. What you can think up, you can think down. <laughs> My thing was, did I want to think it down? <laughs> and that's, you know, um, and, and, and what happens, I never told y'all, I, I got to tell you, somebody remind me, the S in sex, what it actually means. Um, and to this day, uh, sex is a, it means a lot, a lot to me. It means a lot to a lot of people too, even if they're not doing it. They just don't understand their expression. Sometimes their desire is not there and yet they know it should be and they don't understand their expression. And a lot of times it's biological, meaning it's chemical or it's medical um, or it's, yeah, I would say biologically chemical, some type of deficiency or something. So, and then some people blame it on age and age got nothing to do with it, y'all. Uh, my brother's on here. He could tell you about grandpa, um, both our grandpas, which was up there in age. My, my grandpa, I don't even remember what his age was, uh, but there was a time, um, I don't know what exactly happened, but if any of y'all know Newark, New Jersey, there's a street called Summit Street. And it's a, to this day, it's a senior citizens complex. My father's church at that time was on Springfield Avenue um, between 10th and 11th Street. Now, my grandfather didn't drive. Uh, my grandmother, whose name was Drusilla, he, I don't know if she had left the house at that time. I think we were doing chicken dinners or something. I don't remember the whole thing. But he didn't drive. He walked from Summit Street, which is so far. If y'all know where Rutgers University is, way downtown north, he walked there all the way to the church on <laughs> Springfield Avenue North looking for my grandmother. Um, he was high strung, my father's father. That was my mother's father. My father, am I, am I telling it right, Asaph? Um, Pastor Asaph? I call, that's my brother, so he called me, he called me Shabab Bishop, and you know, we, he, I don't, I don't call his first name out of disrespect, he knows that, um, but I'll, I'll say, I'll say doctor, all right, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> my grandfather came all the way up there, I think he had a little bat or something, he, not, not for my grandmother, but he, he was, he was something, there was only, Three people was it? Eight, um, was it Doc that could actually pick Grandma up? That was me. I think. Yeah, I think it was three. That was me. It was Southgate at that time, and I think Dad. Nobody else could pick her up for church or whatever. He was he was a jealous type as well, but high strung sex and my my father's my father's father. Oh my God, he got married. <laughs> Did he get married like one butt after grandma died? You, he, oh, it was just us. I think sometimes Southgate, I think, yeah, it was just us. And he had a little gun, he would come out. Anyway, so sex has always been an important part of the Wobacks. I'm, I'm going to share this with you too. <laughs> my brother might not like me sharing this, but I'm going to share this with you too. My father had a major procedure done. Um, major procedure done some years ago. And um, he beckons, he's in the recovery room, and he beckons to me. I think Asaph, I think Dr. Asaph was there. And he beckons to us. So I'm thinking, he got this, he got this deep revelation to tell us. You know, while he was under, the heavens opened up. God spoke to him. He saw Jesus. He saw St. Peter. He saw St. Paul. He saw Grandma or something. So he's a recovery. And um, 
and, and, and um, I go over to him because he beckons to us. So I'm figuring he's going to tell us something about the Lord while he was under that. God showed him something. And he says, hey, son, am I still going to be able to have sex? <laughs> I was like, this was a major procedure. I, actually, this was bypass. This was bypass surgery. Like, this is serious. Like, uh, yeah, he was concerned. And, um, you know, right after that, I, I remember he would come by all the time to the wellness, the wellness center. And he was like, man, he would be like, oh, man. And I used to give him, I used to give him stuff as well, because you know wanted to make sure he ain't hurt himself with his heart and stuff. And he used to come by. I'd be, I mean, I used to have like fifty clients a day, fifty clients a day from morning to night. And my dad would come walking in cool. This is a man had bypass surgery. Thirty percent of his heart was left. Thirty percent. Nobody lives with thirty percent. Thirty percent. You're supposed to have about one hundred percent of your heart. And he was like. Son, with that stuff you gave me, oh, man. <laughs> I mean, and I didn't want him to hurt himself. So there would be some times I would kind of like, nah, you can't have this herb this time. He, he would have attitude. Oh, man. And I would have to like, okay, I don't want him being mad at me. Let me give him, let me give him some, some more. And then he would come the next day. Look, I'm like, I just gave you something yesterday. He'd be like, son, that was, that was, that was it, man. So that is in my, my, my family, my mother to this day and tomorrow, happy solar return, mom, even though she ain't on Facebook. And she, she, I don't think she ever seen Facebook in her life. But anyway, I'm sending it out because she she'll feel it in her spirit. And my mother, know I appreciate it and love her. Happy solar return, mom. So tomorrow, it's a solar return. I'm just sending it out right now. Uh, that's right, Doc, my brother tell you, Pastor Asaph, he said, there was no better way to leave here. He said, there's no better way to leave here than, than sex. So let me tell y'all this. Um, S in sex is spiritual, and it really is. We treat it physical, but the S in sex as an acronym is really spiritual and it's like it's like a person i ain't never been on like um my brother might know about this but i haven't been on like hard strung out stuff like i never did i never did coke uh i think past a7 might have i never did coke i never did crack i never did that heavy stuff marijuana yeah um, uh, alcohol, yeah, but didn't like it, and still just they wonder how people even like that stuff. But uh, I always hear people saying when they got high, you want to chase that first high. You really want to chase that first high. You want to keep. This is why people when they get addicted, you keep going and going and going. Oh, he said no, he sold it. You sure that's all you did? <laughs> you did a video, look like you had some white powder on your nose. <laughs> well, you had all that white powder on your nose. Uh, but um, it's like you want to keep chasing this. You want to keep chasing this. And it's sex is the same way, except a lot of times people don't know what they're chasing. Uh, they think they're chasing the thrill. <laughs> yeah, acting. <laughs> they think they're chasing the thrill, but you're actually chasing the spirit of that unity that you had, even if somebody you didn't even really like. It could be somebody, it could be a hoe, it could be somebody that you have, you, you don't even like, don't even know their name. But there was a connection, and it was, it was the thrill of uniting spiritually. This is going to be over some of y'all head because this is why you got to come to my private session. And you're chasing that. 
uh, William says, Bishop, what you think musicians should be doing in this season? Um, I think musicians, some musicians should call me because I'm, I'm hiring. <laughs> That's what some of us should do. Uh, but I think musicians should be recreating themselves. I, should, I think they should be recreating themselves. They need to get before the Lord. Um, and there we go with that S-E-X again, that, that sex. I think they need to become intimate with God, spiritually engaged, so they can actually have some new material that is not like it has been in the past, that's physical, but something that is birthed out of the spirit. And I think musicians, which a lot of them don't, I'm a musician, and I didn't um, until I got more mature, but I think a lot of musicians should fast. Um, and they need to rewrite life. And they need to actually realize that, yes, you do need a job, but you should also not be a, a hireling. Because most musicians have been hirelings. It's just about the buck. And I understand you got to eat, you have family, but you need to actually find a place where you're not going to be treated just like a, a J-O-B, just over broke. And you're living from paycheck to paycheck. Because I think a lot of musicians, especially those church musicians, I think they're really going through it. Um, and I would go back to the spiritual principles. I would really go back to the spiritual principles and not work for money. Because when you work for money, you're going to always struggle. I started being more financially secured when I didn't chase the dollar anymore. Um, if I was a musician today in the church, I would want to, I would want to be married in the spirit to a prophet. Notice I said in the spirit, okay? I don't want y'all to think I'm promoting a certain type of marriage. I'm not. I would find a prophet that I could be the minstrel, all right? And be groomed in how to hear. Because a lot of musicians, they hear from a particular zone but they don't hear from a particular rim, and it is totally different. You could be in a zone, but not be in the rim. You could be on the bus, but in the wrong seat, okay? And a lot of musicians are in the, they are on the right bus, but in the wrong seat. Some of them try to drive the bus, and it ain't your job to drive the bus, okay? So I'll stop with that. Um, and a lot of you are on the right bus, but you're in the wrong seat. Some of you should be the passenger and you in the driver's seat. And somebody else should be in the driver's seat and you should be the passenger. All right. Um, and I would definitely, if I'm, if I'm local, so if some of you are in a New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, because it would be worth it. I would get plugged into, uh, you got Pastor Asa up there. He's always looking for somebody and not a hireling, I know, and myself. And we we treat our, our musicians good. I treat them good. They might not treat me good. And um, I've, had, I've had the best talent that money could buy. Guess what? I don't want talent. I don't want talent. Talent don't last with me. I don't need talent. And I'm gonna tell you, I could play myself. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes I gotta let them know, you know, before you came here, I just, I, I just wanted help. Ain't like I needed you. You enhance me. You don't, you don't run me. Um, so talent, I have, I've had the best of the best of the best. Um, if I, I could name some names, I'm not going to, but I've had the best of the best. 
and I don't I don't need I don't need talent. I need some I need someone with a servant's heart and somebody who wants to learn cuz you know what? I'll take them from music ministry to a life experience, some things I'll teach, they'll learn so many different things. They'll learn business. They'll learn how to never chase another dollar. Because that, that's when it's wrong. I remember I was playing for my dad for years. I didn't get a cotton pick and dime. And probably I would have been jacked up if I did. I didn't get a cotton pick. Don't worry, y'all. I'm going to be back on the subject of sex. Because this is really the same. It's really the same subject. It's just one is... It's, it's the same subject. Some of you might say, well, how does, how does music ministry do with anything with sex? Well, first of all, a good, because these are all different, a good worship leader, a good praiser, these are all different, a good singer, because you could be a singer, not a worship leader. You could be a praiser and not a worship leader. A good musician you could be a musician, but not a minister of music. A good uh, minister of music, a good psalmist, doesn't necessarily mean that they're anointed for the ministry that they work for. It could mean that they're hired, but doesn't mean that they're anointed. See, because when you're anointed for the ministry, that you are working for, you ain't, even if you got your feelings hurt, you're still planted. See, we got, we have people that are potted and then people that are planted. Let me see if I can show y'all this real quick. And this is sex. <laughs> this is really sex. Okay. I didn't know I was going to do this. So, this is potted. Okay? Everybody see that? That's potted. Guess what? This can easily come out. Look. <laughs> yeah. This is this this is a lot of musicians right here. And this is a lot of this is a lot of relationships right here. This is a lot of people right here. This is potted. But it ain't it ain't planted. I just made a mess there. Y'all see that? Woo, Jesus, that's good right there. How many? How many of you are potted? Cause see, soon if you're if you're a potted Christian, soon as you get your feelings hurt, you ready to go. You ready to leave. Pastor Ace, if you could preach that. See. Now, if you plant it. Y'all see this? This is planted. If you plant it, it takes a whole lot to get this sucker up. Y'all see this? That's, oops. That's the difference. That's the difference between being potted and being planted. See, this is potted. I'm not going to pull this up and my mother have a fit, but I, I could just pull this up. This. Oops. Uh-oh. This, my friend, is planted. And when it's planted, you almost can't even tell where the root's at because it goes so deep. You got to dig all the way down there. And all, that's a whole lot of effort. Versus potted saints and potted musicians. And I ain't looking for not another cotton picking, plotted, uh, plotted, <laughs> potted um, musician. I don't want another potted musician. Because potted musicians will play for your ministry, that ministry, that ministry. And, and they'll, t they'll tell you they, had, they got 12 gigs the same time you got service because they potted. And easy, potted is easy, easily transferable. 
And then they get a transference of an anointing from um, prophet um, uh, pick his nose. And then they come to your church right after they left him. And now you got prophet pick, a, pick his nose uh, uh, um, environment in your environment. And you're wondering why that's not working when God is moving in you with the prophetic. You're wondering why, man. And you're looking at the musician, you're like, something ain't right. Because you got a potted musician. And then this, this is not just with musicians. A lot of you, a lot of, lot of uh, churchgoers are potted. That's why, I don't care what y'all say, that's why people could be, they, they comfortable. Ain't got, nothing to, ain't got nothing to do with the virus. Okay, I'm going to talk to you now since y'all done been on here this long with me. And I, I didn't mean to go this way, but check this out. Um, oh, I feel the spirit. Some of you are going to say, how could you feel the spirit saying what you're getting ready to say? I do. Um, and that's this. Check this out. Woo. I got to walk for this. A lot of folks in the church are potted. That's why it doesn't bother them. They could stay home for the next 10 years and watch their pastor on Zoom and be okay with it in the name of safety. Because they potted. And if you think I'm kidding, ask them, how many churches have you been to in your lifetime? And guess what most of them are going to tell you? Two or more. And that's, that's a crime right there. Two or more churches? Two or more churches? I'm in the same church that I was born in. Except we moved to another building, but the same church. And, oh, my God. Some people have been in 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20 different churches in their life. You know why? They potted. They never were planted. Because as soon as their feelings got hurt about something, they were out of there. What y'all got to say about the, hey, Master Rob, <laughs> Yeah, cross, ooh, cross contamination, cross contamination, cross contamination, ooh, cross contamination. I, just, I, don't, I don't wear this, but I just have a fun. Cross contamination. Now, I just saw a big line. Carvels, that's what it's called. Carvel ice cream. Right around the corner. I just saw a big line. Um, people going for Carvel ice cream. All right. It's too late now. Y'all on here now. Y'all on here now. Carvel ice cream and Popeye's chicken. The line was around the corner. Unbelievable. And people were like this. Not wearing a good mask like this. This is a P95. If you go and wear a mask. Get the carbon dioxide from going inside your freaking body. Y'all see this? Even though I don't, I don't even have to have that because some store is not going to even let you in <clears throat> without a mask. But my people, y'all believe some of everything. Y'all believe some of everything. So people online, Popeye's chicken around the corner. I stopped counting. I stopped counting. I stopped counting. It was 16 people. And I said, 16 people. It wasn't total. There was more. But there were 16 people. Listen, listen. 16 people outside of um, Popeye's Chicken. And they had their masks on. And I've seen videos of vloggers and bloggers talking about, you need to wear your mask. You need to wear your mask. You need to wear your mask. And they're eating crap galore. Now, Pastor Asaph, you still on? You still on? Because I'm going to need you to hold my chain a little bit. Because I'm, I'm about to go off. Because this is crazy. They're wearing a mask. They're more concerned about the virus than the disease that they're about to eat. They're more concerned about the virus than the shit they're about to eat. They're more, yeah, you heard me. They're more concerned about the virus than the crap that they're putting in their body. 
They're more concerned about the virus than the poison they're consuming inside their body. Do that make any sense? Can somebody, yes, 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 you heard me. You're doing this, you're breathing in carbon dioxide, and then you're eating crap. That is, that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. Thank you, Master Rob. <laughs> that, that, I'm glad I ain't scared all of y'all, did I? Oh, yes, I did, Sharon. I said, shit. That's what it is. That's what y'all eating. Shit. Exactly. You're if you're people are like my and it's and I didn't see not a person, not a Caucasian in line. I saw all my people. And I know I'm looking at people. I can tell they have diabetes and they got a mask on and they're putting crap in their body. They're, you, you're concerned about a virus, but you're eating a disease. Do you know if your A1C is up above the line by one decimal point, by one, by one, you are putting your pancreas in harm's way. If your cholesterol is 200 and over, you are putting your heart in harm's way. And we're wearing a mask. We're concerned about a virus, but eating diseases. People, wake up. You're listening to the wrong people. Really? If you're going to put a mask over your mouth, put it over your mouth to keep from eating shit. Keep from eating sugar. The whiter the bread, the faster you're dead. Put it over your mouth so you stop putting poison in your body. Satan don't like you. And other people don't like you. And the world don't like you, my people. They want you to die. It's not you going out here and there and going to the beach and going to the going to the stores and all that it's you going to the, the food places the fast food places that's going to kill you when i'm telling you people in georgia going to get sick and people going other places going to get sick not because of the distance it's because you being it's because you're being uh, pulled into these stores, these fast food places that actually is killing you. You're eating disease. The whiter the bread, the faster you're dead. Your waistline determines your lifeline. And if some of you are getting offended off what I'm saying, praise the Lord. Somebody need to actually begin to ring your bell. That's good, Lisa. That's good. That's good. And we have to stop this. We have to stop this. We have to stop this, y'all. Most of you, and I see, I see, because y'all put it out there online. I'm seeing what you're eating. Y'all showing the plates. And, and there was one person, they had like all kinds of stuff. And then, it, oh, y'all wear your mask. People ain't wearing their masks. It's stupid. What about people eating all this sugar? They're smart? Seriously? If I don't wear my mask, I'm stupid. But you got four different kinds of ice cream and fried chicken and fried. I ain't seen nothing on your plate that grow. But I'm stupid? I think you need to reevaluate. I think you need to get your head checked. You've been eating so much crap, your brain don't work no more. Ring that bell. <laughs> Ring the bell. I, re I remember that song. I used to like that song. <laughs> I used to like that song, Master Rock. Actually, I still like it. Hey, Linda. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what do you think about that, Dr. Asaf? He says, mucus storing up. <laughs> Ain't that something? We're so concerned about the virus, but not concerned about eating the disease that the virus is actually looking to saturate our body. It's look, and it only going to, the more dairy products you put in your body, the more sugar you put in your body, and the more fast 
And it ain't even fast food. It's fast junk. And it ain't even fast food. It's fast junk. Um, I guess roti rotisserie chicken, if you had to pick between rotisserie chicken and uh, rotisserie um, pig, I guess they would go for rotisserie chicken. But the whole thing is that you want to you want to be more plant based, but then all plant based is not healthy either. You want you really want to eat stuff that that's that grows that grows out of the ground. Thank you, Linda. See, Linda, in my wellness community, so I could be I could be for real. A lot of you you want me be you want me to talk in tongues. Well, I am talking in tongue. I'm talking in tongue you understand. And you need to stop being more concerned about the virus and less concerned. Like, you're less concerned about eating disease, eating crap, eating sugar, eating uh, colors and fried and murdered things that are murdered, eat, eating murdered things. And, and you know, and I'm, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you to be a vegetarian. I'm not telling you to be a vegetarian. I'm not telling you to be vegan, but just use some common. Y'all eating too much crap and disease. And then you think, oh man, I, I got this because they didn't wear no mask. I saw somebody, they had they had um fried chicken wings, a plate full of fried chicken wings and ribs and french fries. And they were talking about how good these fried chicken wings and these french fries was. And say, y'all make sure y'all wear your mask. I can't believe people ain't got no mask. I'm like, this is an idiot. You just ate a plate of heart attack. You just ate a plate of heart attack. And you tell telling people wear their mask. That's like me. That's like me falling into. Uh, I can't say, say I can't swim. And I fall into a pool. And I'm telling somebody throw me a book on how to swim. I fell in the pool. Throw me a book on how to swim. It's too late. And your approach with a mask ain't it. You need to be watching what you putting inside your body. And you, you won't need no mask. And don't forget about, and you won't be no carrier. You know, oh, some are asymptomatic, asymptomatic carriers. Yeah, you're asymptomatic carrier of a heart attack and you don't even know that you're about to have a heart, a heart attack. You don't even know that your C-reactive protein is about to hit the roof. Yeah, some of you asymptomatic diabetic. They, they, they call it pre-diabetes, which is stupid. That's like <laughs> pre-diabetes, pre-diabetes. I'm, 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 I'm pre-mel. Or I might be pre-female. What? I'm pre pre no, either you are diabetic or you're not. Oh, I'm borderline. I'm a borderline. I'm a borderline dude. I'm a, I'm a borderline male. Or I'm a borderline. I'm a borderline female. No, you're one or the other. Okay. I don't care. I don't care what you might favor. You're one or the other. I'm. I'm I'm pre-diabetic, like I'm, I'm borderline. Ugh. It's like I'm, I'm borderline broke. No, you broke. Ain't no borderline broke. Okay, Margaret says, I'm from Brooklyn. I can take it, Bishop. Make it play. I'm glad you can, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you. And just so y'all know, I'm still saved and sanctified. Holy Ghost filled five bad times. Uh, no matter what y'all think, you know, that's why I'm glad. I'm glad I don't work for my ministry. My min I ain't on payroll. I ain't never been on payroll. Getting no check. Uh, I got. I, I. I. Basically, God takes care of me, and really, that's the truth. That's the truth. See, some pastors they gotta watch what they say, man. Most pastors, bishops, they gotta. They have to go into the pool. That's why a lot of them got to go on Zoom. <laughs> they got to go on Zoom. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We got... And I'm kind of tired of seeing almost every ministry that's up. 
And again, don't get me wrong. I believe in the power to see. Probably, probably nobody teach on it as much as I teach on it. The power to see and prosperity and money. But when every one of your broadcasts and every is about my cash app or my or whatever, I don't know all the stuff out there because I don't pay half of it. No mind. I just I be glint, glint, I be going through and I see people <clears throat> PayPal, which is cool because you need a way to you know have some money come into the ministry. But is that is that your main motivation? Is that really your main motivation? How much money you can get? It is sickening, ain't it? And I hear guys can't. I mean, they can't. They ain't saying nothing. They can't even explain Psalms twenty three to me. And they got a cash app up. What the heck I'm sending you anything? First of all, you need to memorize Psalms 23 verse 1. <laughs> and y'all be supporting these people. That's what gets me. You're supporting them so they're going to keep coming back. My cash app and my this one, that, and this, that. And y'all keep sending me. Yeah, get a freaking job like our Pastor Asaph, Dr. Asaph. Uh, uh, excuse me, brother. Uh, which one you want me to call you? Doctor? Pastor? Didn't our, didn't our father have a job? <laughs> our father had a job. He went to work and he had a Bible school and he had he had a, a family. He had a church. That he that he went in his pocket and put the money down. I got the papers. I I see what he put down from his own pocket. He had <laughs> now, nah, man. You 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 got a position. I I I, I respect the position. Uh, yeah, I, me and my brother, we we work, and I ain't talking. Yes, I work in the church, but that's not that's that's not that's I don't get paid for the church. Um, my father had he worked too. Oh, my God, there were times he would work 12, 14 hours, and he had to go all the way from Newark, New Jersey, to Levittown, Levittown, Long Island, which is far. If any, I don't know if anybody know what I'm talking about, but that's far. And I remember times when I would go to, with him to work, and my brother would as well, and we'd pull over to the side because he'd be so tired, but, you know, getting, getting back home. And then he had to, we had service. On Tuesday, every Tuesday, every Friday, and every Sunday. And Sunday was, a, actually we had some services on Saturday. And we used to travel back and forth, Spring Valley, Nanued, New York, doing crusades, revivals. Now you got these over, overweight pastors. They don't want to do nothing except you, you just sending them money, sending them money. And they, they, and they ain't saying nothing, y'all. And if you're behind home all day and all you do is eat, I'm sh you should have some time where you get in the word, where when you get in the pulpit, you're feeding me and you're not getting me excited. You're feeding me where you're empowering me, where you want to show me how I can make some money. How I can make some money. You want to show me how to be a homeowner. You want to show me how to be an entrepreneur. You home all day. You should be seeking the Lord. If you ain't seeking the Lord, at least read some Tony Robbins uh, <laughs> books or something. I mean, learn something to come tell me something. Tell me something. I got too many bills, Pastor. And you telling me, send you a cash app. It's sickening to me. I go through Facebook. I see all these people. They're on there for one thing. One thing. Oh, my God. Ah. Tell me something without me have to give you any, anything. First of all, how about this? I'd be glad to send you something to your PayPal, and I'd be glad to send you something through your Cash App if you tell me something that's going to work for me. And don't be telling me to pray. I done did that for 30, 40 years, and I'm still renting. Don't tell me to pray. I still got arthritis. Like you do, Pastor. I still still have problems with my heart and hypertension, just like you. I'm overweight too, like you, Pastor. Tell me something before I send you a dime.
Let me see what y'all say. <laughs> I don't know if I should read what y'all say. Oh, man. That's right. Sometimes he used to hitchhike when his car broke down. Mm. Anthony Holman. Hey, Anthony, how you doing, man? He says, Pastor, you remind me so much of your father, the Dr. Donald Womack. Your realness and compassion for people is so like him. Hey, when you see me, you see the father. I'm probably a little bit more rough on the edges, though. I'm probably a little bit more rough on the edges. And that's because I saw him go through it with people. I saw him being used by people. I saw my father go in his pocket and take his last out to pay somebody's rent. And then the people left him to dry. People even said, you know what? Um, let me borrow something I give, bring back Monday. You ain't never seen him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Or they just, they, they just did him dirty. So I said, you know what? That ain't going to happen to me. Um, and so that's why I'm outspoken. That's why I say what I want to say. And that's why, <laughs> you know what? If, if, if I want to cuss, I'm going to cuss. You ain't got to listen. And you better be glad I cuss and I don't curse. There's a difference. If I curse you, you got a problem. I cuss you, you can get over that. You can take yourself a shower and wash it off and you be done. But a curse, last time I saw a curse in the Bible, something dried up from the roots, from the roots up. <clears throat> so you don't want me, you don't want me to curse. You just, you just might not. Mm. Let me just leave that alone. <laughs> some of you scratch your head. I thought they were the same. No, they ain't the same. They ain't the same. All right. <laughs> William Harper said, I saw my father was used by people for years. And then they left church, uh, left church folks can get crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It can make you bitter. I, 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 I do my best not to be bitter. And that's why I'm vocal. Um, because if you don't vocalize and you don't express, and I'm like this everywhere. I'm like this at home. Uh, my wife, I think a lot of people marriages because they don't they don't vocalize they they internalize I'm like this at church My people tell you see what you hear. I might have some of my, my some of my members might be on here They tell you if I if I must say something I must say something and then if I say something that's completely out of whack I apologize now so far Since I've been on here ain't nothing to apologize about all right, so because <laughs> what I said is true all right um, but you know, there's sometimes I'll say something that's, that's whack. Uh, me and my brother, we got into things and stuff and we come together, we talk to each other and apologize. Um, but ain't nothing like having a conversation and communication because if you don't and you internalize, you know what you do? You have somebody growing up in, inside of you as a disease. Somebody type this. That's called, that's called issues in your tissues. And I don't want no issue in my body. I don't want no issue, so I begin to talk. Um, anyway, a lot of you, some of the stuff that's going on with you because you did not vocalize and didn't articulate. And then before you know it, you you got a serious beef with something, uh, with somebody, but mostly the somebody is yourself. You wonder why you got high blood pressure and don't realize that somebody that you did not have a conversation with about something you dislike. You're wondering why you have arthritis and low back pain. A lot of people got low back pain and they think it's because it's an old age. I'm going to tell you most everything in the body is because of something first emotional and psychological that manifests as issues in your tissues. All right. Uh, ooh, if I had my Bible right here, I would show y'all something, especially when it comes to cussing and cursing. Because see, some of y'all, some of y'all don't know uh, Jesus. I know y'all. Ooh, y'all better put your seatbelt on for this. And I wish I had my Bible right here. But Jesus did not. He couldn't stand 
religious folks. He couldn't stand religious folks. Him calling them, you like white sepulchers. Uh, or oh, he called them, he called them all kinds of things. He called them white sepulchers. That was like cussing. Oh, they better be, they better be glad he, he said stuff like that. He said, you like dead men bones. He would be calling them out of their name. And, would, he, and they better be glad he was cussing and he wasn't cursing. Because if he were cursed, they wouldn't have been able to move. Issues. That's right. In your tissues. And a lot of, a lot of church people, because we don't, and I think, especially when um, uh, I'm going to start doing this with my congregation, I think we need to have more dialogue instead of the preacher just always talking at us and shoving his philosophy down our throat. I think we need to have a discussion where the pastor, he's leading and he's directing a conversation. Let's say faith. And he says, Brother John, what is your struggle with faith? And Brother John says, well, I'm having, I, I'm having a struggle with faith because I, I, I want to un understand how a God who is love, how he could send somebody to hell and then some other people to heaven. And I believe in God. I'm just having a struggle with that in my faith. And then we build upon that and talk about that. How is it that there's a hell and then there's a heaven? And how is it, if this is a God of love, and my faith is saying, if he's a God of love, how is he sending people to hell? Versus the preacher just saying, God got a heaven, God got a hell. He's going to throw these bad people in hell and the good people going to heaven or the people who received Jesus going to heaven and the people who didn't receive Jesus going to hell. And then you leave still with the same question that you came in church with. Like, okay, I'm more confused than before because you huh, put a huh in it and you put a, a A sharp with it and you hooped, but I still don't get it. Are y'all following me? I think... We need to, as I said, rewrite life, but also rewrite how we give service to the people and allow them, instead of being stool pigeons or just sitting like lumps on a log, get the people as who they are, the church, which is the church. It's not an organization. This way y'all miss it. The church is an organism, which means anything that is an organism, like orgasm, is supposed to move, okay? It's supposed to move. Um, but if we're just sitting there, and the only time we get to move is when the musicians come forth and the music comes forth, and when we're told to jump and shout, um, it's more to it than that. It's more to it than that. So this is, I'm looking at getting, and I've been doing I've been doing that, but I want to do it more where I'm engaging the people. What is on your heart? Um, if I'm talking about love, okay. <clears throat> like what, well, how come I have this type of love for this, but, um, but then I can't stand to look at, I can't stand to look at you when I'm in a disagreement, you know, or, you know, and does it mean I'm still in love or does it mean I'm out of love? Like, let's get real. And get the mind of the Lord concerning these subjects, okay? All right. Um, y'all know I was about to post something about this thing on sex. And y'all just kind of just de distracted me on everything. So anyway, let me end on this. And It's getting late. I got, I got work to do. Y'all still want to hear something about uh, sex. S, spiritual. E, energy. I'll deal with the X in a moment. Maybe I'll deal with that inside the private platform. The S, E, in sex. And if you ain't got this, you can forget about the physical part. You can forget about the physical part. The physical part is going to... You're just going to get a temporary fix and 
get a good screw, good blow job, good hand job, whatever the heck you do, and you're just good for the moment. And that's it. That's it. And you're going to be chasing it again, chasing it again, chasing it again. Because fulfillment is going to actually be void. Spiritual, E, energy. Y'all got that? Spiritual energy. And most of us don't focus on that. We focus on physical climaxes. Now, don't get me wrong. Physical climaxes are wonderful. But what about if you're single and you try to live holy? All right? You're trying to live holy. Or you got a, you got a cute uh, boyfriend or a uh, cute, uh, cute girlfriend or something. And you just, you just, you just want, you just want, want them to do me, baby. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do in a case like that? Are y'all, y'all feeling me? This is where we need to have communication. Spiritual energy must be primary. And spiritual energy doesn't mean like you just have a prayer life. That's a small piece of it. Spiritual energy don't mean that you go around speaking in tongues. I can't tell you how many times I spoke in tongues and um, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about before married, marriage. I'm speaking in tongues and I'm horny like a toad. Like, and don't, they can tell y'all all you want, speak in tongues with, or take, how about this one? Take a cold shower. Take a cold shower. Do you know if I take a cold shower and I'm horny, I get more horny because more blood is stimulating me. <laughs> like, seriously? Take a cold shower? That's making it worse. Now I'm hitting the sides of the shower door. Like, boom, boom. boom. Are you playing? But this is the kind of stuff we've been hearing in church. <laughs> oh, that's that's it? Like you never done before. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then when you up there like 50, celibate and frustrated, speaking in tongues? Nah. 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 Now, this, ooh, we got it. We got to have, we got to have, hold on, I wrote something that I just don't like going upstairs right now. I wrote something down that was really, um, that I did in the first session. And I'm going to do it again. Y'all email me because I'm not, I'm not posting this because I don't want, there's a lot of critics. And when I do talks on this, I'm like straight up. I'm like, first of all, I'm transparent with myself and I'm straight up. And um, I, I ain't sugarcoating nothing. I ain't sugarcoating nothing for the believer because that's why believers are jacked up. Because everybody been sugarcoating. Man. God's going to take care. He's going to send you a man, honey. Send you a man. You've been waiting 30, 40, 50 years. Ain't no man came yet. Or God's going to send you the right woman. You've been waiting 30, 40 years being faithful as a praise and worship leader. No, nah, no, nah, man. There's something more to it than that. And then some, I hear some pastors telling, telling, especially singles, to do some other stuff. I was like, no, man, it's making it worse. And, and you keeping your mate away from you. You're actually keeping your mate away from you. And then if you do get somebody and you, you know, you, you screw it around with toys and stuff, man, it's going to, you're going to have a terrible, terrible, terrible sex life. Like it's just, you're never going to be fulfilled. People, ah, oh my God, we got to have real talk. What do you do with with this bundled up energy? And it's, and it's really, it's really for the glory of God. And I'm not talking about for you to be a preacher. I'm not talking about for you to be a praise and worship leader. I'm not talking about for you to be a dancer. No, 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 no. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's better to marry than to burn. Now, what about people who don't want to get married? 
That's something we need to talk about too. Because there's some people who say, you know, I just don't want to get married. Or there's some people who say, you know what, I've been married. I've been married and I don't want to be married again because it was just, it just suck. And I've talked to people like that. Like, I've been married twice. There's somebody I know, they've been married three times. And they like, they like any anybody who even approached them at all about marriage. And I think they almost got married again. The other person, they just did them in. So you have people who have serious bad. And then here's another thing. Why do you keep attracting the same type of person? Hmm. Why do you keep attracting the same kind of person? They're just no good for you. Which just means you got to do some work on you. Because if you keep attracting the same kind of person, ain't no good for you. Um, there's something in you that you got to deal with. And we could talk about that too. So, Paul, that's why you want to email me. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put this out there like that. I want to have a close discussion on a certain platform. So I'm giving y'all little teasers. Okay? That's sexual too. I'm giving y'all little teasers. All right. Those of you that are married, when the last time you 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 teased your mate? Just tease them. Some of you see, and, and a lot of y'all, you, you know, you don't do what you did to win them, to keep them. Oh, Lordy. That is a good question, ain't it? Okay, Margaret says, I was married many years ago. Not sexually compatible. Now, this is a good question, too. This is a good question, too. Some people just not sexually compatible. Some people just not sexually compatible. Now, what do you do being single? And I'm curious, any of you, I'm curious to see, especially those of you that are Christians, what do you do if you're not sex? How, how, if you're holding out for your husband or your wife and you're not sexually, first of all, how do you know if you're not sexually compatible? Mm. As soon as I get 30 more people, because I already had the first set of 30 people, question is when is conversation going to happen i get 30 more people email me and <laughs> paul says the anointing oil <laughs> it depends how you use the anointed oil you got to you got to know how to use that anointed oil um it ain't it ain't anointed oil if it don't work because the anointing works it removes the it removes the yoke and it removes the burden that's what anointing does. Y'all look at scripture. It says the anointing breaks the yoke and it removes the burden. Some of you got that sex burden. Some of you got that got that burden, uh, um, that 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 loving feeling that you got. And some and some of y'all, if you tell the truth, you're tired of masturbating. Some of you're tired of masturbating. That's all because that presents a whole nother challenge. You feel good for the moment, but then he's like, oh, man. <sighs> oh, my God, my God. What did y'all start? The fire is not, is not lit. It's not lit yet. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's having fun but hell. That's not fun at all. And 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 this is really important, too, uh, Margaret, because... Uh, a lot of females, a lot of women, a lot of wives won't communicate to the husband because they they feel I'm going to hurt his ego. And if you got a real good man, he's he 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 should be looking at you. He should be asking you, "You like this? Is is, is this okay? A little? You want me to want me move a little bit to the right? You want me to move to the left?" Is 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 this slow enough? Fast enough? Hard enough? 
whether he using his his mouth, tongue, finger, penis, whatever, there needs to be communication. Because otherwise, how how is he going to know? A lot, of men, a lot of men is just shooting in the dark. And you got to understand, a lot of men were not taught. If, if anything, most people learn from what they learned in the street. Because most mothers and fathers did not sit their children down and go over stuff with them. And very few pastors sat their young people down or old people down and told them anything what to do. Um, I learned a lot um, hanging with my cousins. I was, I was younger. I would see what they were doing. We, we were raising the projects. I, I, would, I, would, I would see what was taking place in the hallway. Yeah, the hallway. In the elevator, in the back rooms. I don't know if one of my cousins is on, but they... Um, I learned a lot from the streets. And then when I became of the right age, my mother and father, oh my God. And I had already, I had already investigated things from the street and from my cousins um, through, observa through observation and then later on trying to some of the same stuff that basically I learned from the streets. And the stuff I learned from the streets was totally different than what my father told me. The stuff I learned from the streets had no sensitivity. The stuff I learned from the streets didn't teach you how to be gentle. I'm talking about me. The stuff I learned from the streets, I just saw women as uh, you just screw them. That's from the street. My father actually re-educated me and I saw something totally different. And I was being rebuked in the church. Um, I mean, really rebuked. Because there were a lot of stuff I had practiced that I learned from the streets. Because I didn't get it from him at that time. And then later on, when I was getting out of control, because women was coming to my dad from the church. <laughs> And um, I started getting a different view and started, you know, because I never saw my father disrespect women. And you might say, well, I, I, I didn't disrespect them as far as, um, how would I say? Not fussing, fighting, calling them out a name, things like that. But when you just, it's just, I just want to screw, that's a disrespect all of his, of itself. And, and again, it was young, you know, Hearing my cousin saying, you know, um, what do you call it? Soya oaks or something like that. So this is this was this was the street training. But my dad began to teach me some things after I got caught up with a bunch of stuff and started teaching me, you know, he would say, you know, I love your mother. And um you should be treating women like I treat your mom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Y'all hear me? <laughs> now that's, a, that's like, whoa, whoa. That's something to think about right there. Just that right there. Okay? That's, that's something right there. All right. Let me get off of here. Y'all get anything out of this? Margaret says, magic answer. If he's a good man. Very unsympathetic to my needs. I stayed, I stayed faith because of kids. Yeah, a lot of people do that because of children. Oh, I'm gonna tell you something. If you're not happy, you got to be happy because y'all, when this life is over, it's over, it's done. Don't be miserable for nobody. Don't be miserable. Because you're going when you dead, you're gonna be dead for a long time. And when you get ready to leave this planet, you want to make sure you have no regrets. No regrets. The beautiful thing about um, a husband and a wife is that you're learning. 
And I don't care if you've been in marriage 50, 60, 70 years. You're going to still be learning. And you're going to learn how to work through things if, if both want to. And if both want to. Now, when the other person just, if a person just not, don't want to cooperate and just totally ignoring you, it's, it's time. It's time to just move on. And it's okay. Take what you learn, and now you do better with somebody else. Okay? And marriage is honorable, and it all in the bed, undefiled. Y'all know what that mean? That mean anything in that bed goes, and it's sacred. Anything in that bed goes is sacred. Whatever you want to do, all right? As long as you're not bringing no harm, um, even if it's a little slap here and there on the butt, if that's what you into, as long as you ain't killing. And my phone went out for a moment, y'all. See, so many are married, but still burning. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of people burning. And a lot of people need to have conversations and just say, honey, I'm sorry, I didn't tell you this, but I, we need some better sex. Oh, I need more. But don't even think about the physical until you get this, the spiritual. Your, spinach, your um, spiritual energy needs to be synergized to the desire of what you want physically. And I'll explain that when we come together. Y'all have to email me, bishop at bishopwomack.com if you want to come on these conversations. Amen. Amen. All right, folks. Thank you, Rose. Rose says, great teaching. Thank you. I ain't even teach, really. I was just talking. I do want to teach, though. Oh, man, the art of making love is super important. And um, we need to have discussions and show flow charts and show PowerPoints of positions and some of everything. And some of y'all need to get your bodies where you could be, where you could do positions instead of, yeah. Some of you need to, some of y'all need to um, take yoga. Seriously, take yoga so that you can learn how to do something a little different. And then you'll probably be more, but again, and you, and when you understand yoga, see y'all, I'm supposed to be done. I'm supposed to be finished. When you understand yoga, yoga, and I got to get in contact. Um, this young lady used to work for me. She's, she's fantastic, phenomenal. My aunt um, Barbara, who does my hair, his wife does yoga, um, actually performed their marriage ceremony. And she's fantastic. I'm going to see if she's going to, if she can come the 25th through the 28th. And maybe we'll start our mornings off where she actually, that is spiritual. That's one way to get your sexual energy going. Because it's spiritual energy first. Spiritual energy first. And that's just one. That's one way. That's not the only way. Um... It's like some of you can't sit on your heels, which means your sexual energy is trapped. And if some of you sit on your heels for about one minute, you're done. Your sexual energy is trapped. There's some people I've talked to and I've, I even ignored them. They sent me, they sent me emails. I didn't even respond to the email because um, they didn't do nothing with the information I told them. So I'm like, I'm not going to be, I want to give my, I want to give this information and the content to people who are going to do something with. So there's some folks, uh, there's somebody I know, I've told them so many times, you need to start somewhere. Start somewhere. Touch them. Lick them. Kick them. Something. And they just do nothing. Week, month after month, month after month. So if you make no effort of striking the match, there ain't never gonna be no fire. You can make make some effort. Make some effort. And it has nothing to do with just the physical. It's spiritual energy. Yeah, yoga, yoga, 
Now, there are different types of yoga. Uh, Hatha yoga is just dealing with breathing. I don't recommend everybody do the heat yoga. If you are new to yoga, don't do the heat yoga because you're going to hate it. It's going to kick your... It's wonderful, but you should have some time in it first. Um, there, there's all different types of yoga. I can go over some of the stuff with y'all probably later. I'm going to see um, those of you going to be here the 25th. If y'all want a yoga session, let me know. I'm going to see if I can get her to come. No, Alicia, no. Single people need this more than married people. <laughs> she says, is this discussion only for married or people in relationship? Oh, no. It's for people. Actually, I would say people who are not married need this more. Because there's a lot of, a lot of false sexual expressions when you're dating and i'm like this if especially if i was a woman oh my god if i was a woman and i'm giving up my cookies and my cream that negro better make sure i am highly taken care of like he he if we ain't married and uh what who who's that who is that? They say put a ring on it. I was one of the entertainers. Was it Beyonce? Might be Beyonce. I ain't got no ring on it. Ooh. I'm getting a minimum of 5000 a week. I'm serious. If you're going to sniff it, that's 2500 a week. Seriously. It was Beyonce? Oh, yeah. And you can just see me walk around with my panties and my bra on. That's $1,500 a week. Like, I just ain't giving it up like that. You're going you gonna to pay me. Seriously. Oh, my God. Okay. I know some of y'all think I'm crazy. But, because, you know, the Bible says that the woman, her vagina is a field with value, a feel like a feel of pearls, a feel, somebody wrote a book, I think the feel of diamonds, y'all need to read that, ain't no way I'm giving it up for a cheeseburger, ain't no way you're gonna buy me a pizza, or take me to a movie, or take me to dinner for that fat, like, no way, you want, you want, mm. And see, we need to teach women the, their value. And this is why sex becomes so confusing and you go from one relationship to another relationship and then from that relationship to another relationship, especially single. So anyway, my conversation, this, this is, you could be married and you could learn something. But I think single people and people who are dating or people who are maybe not dating, you're in not a serious relationship. Hey. Uh, and I'm telling you from a, I'm telling you from a man who knew, who, I'm telling you from a man who knew how to get it day and night. And, and, and listen to me, that was one thing in my life. Me and my brother had no problem getting a woman. <laughs> I'm supposed to be God, y'all. I'm supposed to be God. I got work to do. I can't just stay here all night talking to y'all. Y'all put, see somebody, your spirit, see this is what I mean, spiritual energy. Somebody's pulling this out of me. Otherwise I'd have been gone. Somebody's pulling this out of me. But ain't, ain't no, there, there were times me and my cousin, um, I don't think he's probably not on here. My A couple of my cousins, my cousin James. I remember when he first got a car. We would ride around and just just looking for women. And and we'll find a woman every day. Brand new woman every day. So I know I know how women get played. I know how women get played. And when my brother got a little older, we did the same thing. My other cousin, he comes on here sometime, Kim. Kim Dawkins used to be me, Kim, and Arnie. Oh my God. 
I mean, we, we could have a, a whole, we could have a woman every day. So I know how women get played and I know how vulnerable women are because you just want somebody to treat you nice. You want somebody to tell you the nice thing. You want somebody to treat you nice. But sometimes that treating, how, some, sometimes that treating nice has a different intent. And I could say this now that I'm older and more mature. Uh, I could say this now. Um, but a brother who got a good rap, he could just about do anything if he got a good rap. And women are stimulated by what you hear. Men are stimulated by what they see. A man don't, he, 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 a man, see, a man gets more stimulated by what he hear later on. Maybe as he get married and so forth. And, but, but he's those eyes. The eyes is what stimulates a man. Um, a woman by what she hear and what she feels actually stimulates her. And that doesn't go away. Like you, you learn how to master that more and more and more and more. Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't say that. It depends what kind of woman you're dealing with. Paul says, um, most don't appreciate the good guys. Mm. Now, if you're dealing with, uh, if you're dealing with a hood rat, and I've dealt with, me and my brother dealt with hood rats too. There's a certain way to deal with them. If that's what you're dealing with, but you know, I know, you don't want no hood rat. A hood rat, you know, they want a thug and, you know, they want somebody, you know, they, you, you can screw them inside the elevator. Like, <laughs> they don't even care. It's like, you ain't got to go to a nice hotel. You, you can take them back seat of the car or whatever. Um, and not not every hood rat, because you got some good women, too. They do the same thing, too. But, um, no, you'll know. A woman of value Recognize a man of value. A woman of value recognize a man of value. Um, and that's just it. And this is where God comes into the picture too. Because you got to ask God to give you direction where to go. And today, whew, it you know, today we use the internet, which is really dangerous dangerous and that's most people dating platform most people dating platform is the boob they see first the ass they see nothing about character it's all about i like what you look like and again men are stimulated by what they see but that's dangerous because you don't even get you you go you know you chat for a while chat for a while maybe you might get the number and talk on the phone but that ain't it that ain't now if you you low and and this is what's happening today people are lonely so when you're lonely man how long i've been on here jesus must have been on here at least over an hour going on too um i hope y'all getting something when you're lonely, you do anything. When you're lonely, you do anything. You'll even, you'll even compromise the things that you say you wouldn't even do. And I'm telling you, I know firsthand, when you're lonely, you do anything. Because God said it's not good for man to be alone. So you'll, you'll go ahead and enter the chat rooms, You'll do all kinds of stuff, porno sites, even when you know it's wrong. You'll do all because you're lonely. And this is why the, the internet, especially um, pornography sites, they're so dominant now. They, they make millions, if not billions of dollars because people are lonely. And this is why we need communities like we're doing right now. We need wellness communities. We need to get in conversations. This is why... I can't wait to open up Radiant Light Club again, and I want to have some things for singles where if you're interested in somebody or somebody's interested in you, go through me first. Let me screen the joker. Let me screen this sister and let you know 
this is going to work or this ain't going to work. See, a lot of you scared of that, but you need somebody to scream. See, other cultures do it. We, as a people, this is why stuck relationships don't work with us. We don't go through the screening process. You take an Indian family, they don't care what that son say. They don't care what that daughter say. This is your wife. This, and, and sometimes the son don't like the girl. He don't like the way she looked. He don't like, but they have screamed that. They didn't just scream the girl. They screamed what the mother did in her life, what her mother did, what the father did. And see, we, we I, I know some of you, you got a little problem with this, but let's look at the success rate among the Jewish community, the Indian families, and some of the Asian communities where the husband and wife is actually picked and they still stay married 50 years later and rich. Where we go ahead and, you know, we go through a two, three, two, three marriages and got nothing out of the deal and broke as could be and trying to chase money for child support. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. I'm looking to see what y'all are saying here. And I think um, somebody said, I need your pow. <laughs> pow. In case y'all don't know, that's called profit of wellness. So I believe in screening. No, there's some people don't don't have no good screening because they don't they're not using the measure. And the right measure is really the word of God. They're using some other stuff. Now, even, and I'm saying for us, because we're spiritual people, um, the Indians, they look at, you got to be in the same religion we have to be. You have to be, you know, uh, his father, his grandfather was a doctor. His father is a politician. The mother does this. I mean, they... I can go over I can go over this stuff with y'all and um show y'all and a lot of times they learn they don't even like each other but then they they don't even love each other and then these people they in love like crazy like like that they learn to love because the screening proved beneficial more than I think he's cute more than uh she has pretty legs more than uh, she has a uh, she has a fat ass that type of thing, where well, that stuff don't work, man, because that all that all those physical features are going to change. So now what you, what you got left, okay? Or uh, the sex was really hot, okay? <laughs> Before marriage, okay? You screw the sex was really hot. Now it's not hot. Now now what you got? This is where that spiritual energy comes in, y'all. It's so vital. It's so vital. And my people, we got it. We are, we are like slavery actually has done us in. Ooh, what did I do? I lost the chat. Okay. Slavery has done us in. And then we want somebody. Oh, he look cute. Oh, he got he got nice chest. Oh, ooh, she got nice breasts. <sighs> Man, they ain't going to sustain you. They ain't going to sustain you at all. That's not going to sustain you at all. Uh, can you scroll up to see a topic suggestion I would like to hear your views on? Let's see if I can find it. I'm really your brother, my pastor at the moment. Hmm, Pamela, he's on to something because I didn't even know y'all had that discussion. Was it in your name, um, Alicia? Screening wouldn't be a problem so long as you have the right person screening. Some people don't have a good screening history and must mess up relationships. Is that what you meant? I don't know. Go ahead, type it again. Because there's a whole lot of stuff on here. I hope y'all getting something out of this because y'all taking my time right now. I didn't, I didn't expect to be on this this long. Oh, yeah, he's light-skinned with nice hair. Yeah, that one. 
Oh, yeah, that, that ain't gonna work for you. Okay, yes, sir. It starts with, I would love to hear your views. No, I would love more than share it with y'all. Um, listen, y'all, I done been through it all. I ain't always been saved. And then when I was saved, I ain't always been right either. Um, but I'm telling you, I got a lot under my belt right now. I got a lot under my belt right now. At 61, there's a lot of things. If I had to do all over again, I would do things totally different. Uh, like I said, I learned a lot of stuff from the street. Um, in Newark, projects, uh, street called Belmont Avenue. This is called something else now. I don't know what it's called. Irvin Turner Boulevard, I think. I don't know. Anyway, Avon Avenue, um, Jesus, Clinton Avenue. These are the places I came up. Prince Street, um, 17th Avenue Apartments. These are places I just dig, did a whole bunch of, whole bunch of craziness and f uh, just crazy. Um, but. I thank God for everything I experienced, the good, the bad, the ugly, because it helps me to better help somebody else so they don't go through the crap and the, and the mistakes that I went through. And I went through a lot of them in church and out of church. And I thank God for it. And um, I've counseled quite a few people. Um, I've, I've counseled a lot of people in the area, uh, marriage, sex, you name it, money, health, especially sex. Yes, yes, it, it, I, it, I would say it made me who I am today as well. And thank God for a, a magnificent, and again, happy soul to return to mom, which is tomorrow. Um, my mother, If y'all really want a woman to talk to, you should talk to Dr. Joan, seriously. But if you don't want raw, don't talk to her. If you don't want raw, don't talk to my mother. My mother's up there. I can't tell you her age because she will have my head. But um, she up there and she will grill you you come here, you really want to, you want to get delivered? Let me let you sit in her office, close the door, and you go take your, take you a handkerchief too, because you're going to probably need it. And then take a notebook. And uh, whatever, whatever challenges you think you got going on, by the time she get finished talking to you, you're going to be okay. And I'm telling you, she was, but she's raw, and everybody can't take her raw. She talks, she, she says something, you know, before the congregation, that's one thing. But when she takes, she, <laughs> I'm thinking of a conversation she had with somebody. <laughs> and she, my mom is up there too. And it was somebody, they had just, things wasn't going right in the bedroom. It's like, do you put your mouth on it? What? You don't put your mouth on it? Do you touch it? What? You put the, some oil on it? What? Do you, do you put on lingerie? Do do you have do you have my brothers? Do you have granny bloom, bloomers on? Do you have sexy panties? What, what kind of panties? What kind of panties? What what kind of panties do you have? Oh no 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 no! He can't see you with granny panties on. <laughs> Woo! Jesus! Some of y'all not ready for my mama, Doctor Joan. Womack. Some of you ain't ready for her. Do you dance? And then she'll go, she'll go through the story. She'll tell, well, my husband was the manager of Channel Lumber. And I would call him up. And I say, Don, why don't you come home for lunch? I I got I got on I got on your your favorite lingerie. <laughs> she, she'll go right into this whole story. She'll go through all the stories. And she said, my father would rush. He said, oh, all right, dear. Now, he, he would be in the middle of something or a meeting. He's like, all right, dear, I'll, I'll be right there. And he, 
He go freshen up in the in the bathroom at work and comb his hair and go home. My mother be behind the door and she throw a leg out. <laughs> she say he go go they go through his he go through his business and and rush back to work and, she, and so. Oh Lord, some of y'all need to call Dr. Joan Womack. You need to say my mother. Because that's what's missing in the church today. We used to have mothers used to t t tell women. They ain't going into a lot of detail like my mother. But they used to say, honey, you need to do something. Because you ain't going to do it. Somebody else going to do it. Somebody else going somebody else gonna do it for, to, for him. No, Dr. Joan, don't play. Pamela, you heard her before, right? She, I th she came to... Um, she came to y'all church. She don't play. And the older she get, the more sassy she is. And she be straight up with it, y'all. Straight up. Yeah, we need more of that. Because we, we really don't have that. Don't have that in church. All right, folks. I got to go. I got to, I got to get up early tomorrow. And... Um, I got a lot of people I got to email, so I got to go, and I got more work to do. I'm working on this on this book. I should do a sex book, tell you the truth, with pictures. What y'all think? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! What y'all think if I did a sex book or with pictures, with scriptures? Arabu Shata. My God. Ooh, the bishops would talk about me. But they be talking about me and they be and they would be they would be read my book too. Trust me. Cause they need it too. Amen. All right, love you all. Why don't y'all share this video? Let's 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 start a uh, let's start a sexual revolution in the church the right way. A lot of people are all oh, mean in church. So they just need a good screw. Okay, let me go if I start up again. All right, bless you, Paul. <laughs> bless you, Margaret. Alicia. I still ain't seen it. No, what? What? What did you write? You said I'm just talking. So I'm probably I'm not seeing it. What did you write? You said you rewrote the topic and I still haven't seen it. Write it right now. Maybe I can see it. What is the topic? This is for Alicia. What's a good title for the book? What's a good title for the book? Because I, I said so much stuff, y'all. What did I say? A good screw? I don't know. I say so much. I'm looking to see if Alicia is going to put something here. She said, I miss. What did I miss? Uh, okay, I don't see anything. I'm trying to hold on a little longer. Oh, yeah. Ivory? Ah. Uh, I'm, some of the older women get mad, but yeah. One of the things my dad told me, my wife is 10 years younger than me, just so y'all know. My wife is 10 years younger than me. One of the things my dad told me is don't marry. This is, this is what my dad told me, so don't y'all get mad because he gave me counsel. So just because what he told me doesn't necessarily mean for you, but uh, I think everybody can learn. He said, you be with somebody younger than you. If because I, I was the you know the man, he said get somebody that can have the energy for you. My wife is ten years younger than me, and even her ten years younger than me, she has she has a challenge keeping up with me because my energy is up there all the time. All right, so that kind of you can kind of equal it out if she's younger than you. If she's like one year younger than you, I don't know. Um, it could work. Because it, it, it has a lot to do with how you take care of yourself. I'm still, I don't know, maybe Alicia left. I wanted to see what topic she was talking about. 
All right. Uh, sex. Oh, sex revolution. Yeah, sex revolution in the church, the right way. Hmm. Okay, hold it. Here is Alicia. I asked what your views are on a couple having sex before marriage and last 30 or 50 plus years versus those who wait and don't last 10 years. Um, I think it's a waste. I would save that for my discussion, but um, <clears throat> I think that is such a waste of energy. It's so much that you could be building together with a covenant that you're wasting that energy in sex and there's money on the table, there's opportunities on the table that's not happening, there's building, um, building a structure and an infrastructure that's not happening. I think when a man, um, and I'm going to tell you, and my wife would tell you this, uh, we dated a long time. There's so much more we could have, we could have gotten together. Uh, we could have gotten together earlier if we had gotten married early. I think it's such, did y'all hear me? I said, if I had to do it again, there are things I would do totally different. I think if you're in a relationship, but you're not in a commitment, because there's a difference. There's a big difference between going together and being married together. Because one, there's no commitment. Um, marriage is a commitment. The other one, there's no commitment. You could do whatever the heck you want, anytime you want, because there ain't no commitment. We could have built so much more. And um, we're doing extremely well. Uh, my wife is doing well. There's so many things, if we had gotten married earlier, that we could have just did extremely well. So I think if you're having sex before marriage and you last 30 or 50 plus years, what a waste. What a waste of time. How many how many real estate projects could you have gotten together? How many, oh my God, how many uh, ministries could you have developed? How many projects could you um, have accomplished? How many things could you have invented? How m Even monies, like so much because of commitment. Are you getting me, folks? Commitment. And I'm going to tell you straight out, just like, myself, usually when a man don't commit and he ain't ready, he just not ready or he don't think you, he don't think you, you're qualified. When I made up my mind, I let everybody know. I mean, everybody, everybody. Actually, when I proposed to my wife, I wanted everybody to know um, it's over. It's done. This is my choice. It was on TV. I think they played it for three weeks on TV. And it was on TV. I had proposed to my wife on TV. There was a church service going on. They thought I was going into my regular service with my PowerPoint presentation. I had my little click in my hand. And everybody's ready and... Uh, before she was my wife, uh, Lady Antoinette was sitting, looking at the screen, about to take notes of the PowerPoint, and it was like, Antoinette, will you marry me? I had it on the church screen, got on my knees, had the ring, had prearranged for her family to come, her brother, um, I'm not sure at that time, I'm not sure if he was living in New Mexico at that time. But anyway, I know they flew up and stuff um, because I wanted every, I wanted, I wanted every woman from the past, every whole, everybody. <laughs> Some of my kids, they watching right now. But I wanted everyone to know, 
this is who I this is who I want to be with, and I want to be committed to. So I mean, and that's just the way it is. When I think I think you and I'm gonna tell you, I wasted I wasted a lot of time. I wasted a lot of time. It don't make no sense to be when you look at scripture. They met somebody. They got married. Uh, we strung around for years, man. Is it that just it don't make no sense? It don't make no sense. It just don't make no sense. You're wasting time. And I'm going to tell you something. This is a question. It's amazing I said this. And I was about to get off here. Y'all did it again. Alicia, it's your fault this time. It's your fault. But um, the Lord had just given me this question on Saturday. How many years of your life have you wasted? And that's a serious question. How many years of your life have you wasted? And I took my children yesterday. We I just took took my children yesterday. I like I like having quality time. Like with with uh, sometimes I take them one by one. Uh, sometimes I take them all together. I have three children, two boys, one girl. The boys are overprotective of their sister. And sometimes I like taking them one by one and we hang out or we go somewhere or we just get a hotel and, you know, have some nice, healthy food and watch a movie and stuff. Quality time with, with the children, you know, because we can't, we, sometimes we go to movies, couldn't go to movies because no movies open. Or I'll take them to see plays or shows, but none of that was open. So I just had some time with them last night. And um, I was thinking last night, man, I mean, it was great having time with them. My, one of them is 14. Uh, another one is 12. Another one is nine. And I was like, man, I was enjoying myself with them last night. And I said, man, I should have did this a long time ago. A long time ago. Hey, I'm 61. I got a nine-year-old. Y'all hear me? I'm 61, I got a 12-year-old. I'm 61, I got a 14-year-old. When, if I'd have did it a long time ago, my children have been like adults and married, et cetera, and we could be, I mean, we still hang out and stuff, but we could be hanging out as adults, not children. Are you following what I'm saying? We could be hanging out as adults, uh, not children, even though my 14, my 14 year, um, year one, um, I don't like to say old, a 14 years experienced son, um, he'll be before you know it. He's a teenager now. Uh, before you know it, he'd be an adult. But I think we waste time because we have these, these hope it will change type of mentality towards the person that we're dating or having sex. And you see everything in one week which you need to see if this is a person you need to be with the rest of your life. You really do. Come on, y'all. Y'all talk back to me on that since y'all done kept me on here this long. And then I gots to go. If you... Uh, you says the type of people I'm talking about commit. Not if they ain't married. <laughs> Not if they ain't married. Because that's, that's the excuse I use. There ain't no commitment without a contract. That's the whole purpose of business. Anybody, how many of you would, how many of you would give somebody $100,000 to build you a house and no contract? Oh, listen, young people. Ain't no contract, ain't no commitment. Don't fool yourself. Don't let the, don't let the peen and the puss fool you. The peen and the puss will fool you. Oh, my God. The peen and the puss will fool you. My God. Many peens have been deceived by the puss, and many puss have been deceived by the peen. Many of them. Ain't no commitment. Just because somebody in there, uh-uh. The commitment is a contract. Everybody is a contract. And that contract, that contract is on paper. So if you try to get out the contract... You got to go to court and you're going to think twice before you got to go to court. And you're going to think twice before you got to give up half because 
Because when ain't nothing on paper or ain't nothing done said before God, ain't no commitment. Everybody get this? Because I'm telling you, my peen has been deceived by the puss. And y'all puss have been deceived by the peen. And that, that, folks, don't go by that. I'm telling you, you get a good come, man. You go, ooh, this, ooh, I could be with this forever. Because you, you drunk. You drunk in the spirit. You, you ain't seeing right and you ain't feeling right. You, I mean, you feeling right, but you ain't yourself. You, can, you ain't thinking straight. Okay. I got to go, y'all. I got work to do. I hope y'all got something out of this. I hope I, I hope I ain't I hope I wasn't too much for y'all where y'all don't think I'm a bad of God because I because I said ping and puss. But a man of God, a man of God, a man of God should have ping and a woman of God should have a puss. <laughs> and it should <laughs> otherwise you got a problem. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Sexual hypnosis. Woo, that's the that's the worst. Especially if you got a good one too. Oh my God. Okay. All right. Oh, uh, she said I didn't read a whole comment. So what we gotta do, y'all got to okay, because I can't read all these. I there's so many comments on here. Y'all got to come on a session where I can I could talk to you and y'all could talk back to me. Cause I ain't well, I ain't a text person, really. I don't really like all this. I mean, I'll look at this and here, or there, or whatever. But I like, I like, I like hearing, seeing, communicating. You hearing me? I'm hearing you. That's the best way. All right. So Ivy, going back, and then I got to go. Um. A younger, a younger woman would be good, but not too young where she childish and foolish. Somebody maybe you can teach some things to, and I'm not talking about just teaching sexually, because if you don't teach her things about life, then she could care less about you teaching her something about sexually. If you get a, a woman and she is open about you teaching her about life, and um, if you're good in business and you're good in... Um, If you're good and if you, it, it can stimulate her intellectually, a woman don't mind you teaching her. But it can't be just about sex. Um, well, I, that's not going to work. No, I didn't. I didn't make it. You said, uh, Alicia, you said you made it seem like I'm promoting no marriage. Mm -mm, not at all. I'm just saying, they if they ain't no commitment, if it ain't a marriage, that's 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 according to God. I don't care what nobody say. They ain't no. I, I've been out there playing that playing that game, and I know they ain't no commitment. There's no such thing. It's just like what you. It's just like Oprah and whatever that dude name is, right? And you can see that woman depressed. She's as depressed as could be, but they supposed to have a committed relationship. Ain't no committed relationship at all. <laughs> no, and guess what? Without relating, there is no relationship. And you're not going, and having sex is not relating, okay? Um, that's a whole, ooh, let me stop. Because there's a, relating and relationship, these are two totally different meanings. Um, there ain't no commitment, y'all. I'm just going to tell you straight out. There ain't no commitment without marriage. Because marriage, according to the word of God, is covenant. And covenant, according to the word of God, is a contract. Oh, Pastor... Doctor Asaph, I know you. Were you still on here or did you just come back? 
He says they're in two separate, separate homes. And he knows me and him played the field. Me and him played the field a lot. And, and I, he probably, I don't even think my brother would have got married if I didn't get married. I don't think he would have got, he just came back. I don't even think he would have got, man, I've been on here too long. If my brother had left, probably, probably the eight had sex and then came back. <laughs> Ah, he probably wouldn't even got married. Um, <laughs> nah, um, there ain't no, there's, there's, there's no commitment. There ain't no commitment without a covenant. I'm not going to get nobody a hundred thousand dollars, build me a house and we're not going to have a contract. It's just, it's not going to happen. I got to have a contract of some sort. <laughs> All right, got to go. <laughs> Paul says, so she been shacking all these years. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, I, oh, I know about that, too. I know about that, too. I know about all this stuff, y'all. All this stuff. Ah, uh, Stedman. Nah, why, what do you, why should he marry her? Mm -mm. You get, you get the milk for free, and I don't even think you get no milk. You get for it's, it, when they say you get the milk for free. Why purchase the cow? There's no reason. There's no reason to purchase the cow. All right, good people. I'm glad this was intriguing. Interesting. <laughs> it's dairy free. <laughs> ah! Ah! It's dairy free. You talking about Oprah? <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. That's why you need to. That's why you need to email me a couple other conversation, Alicia, since you feel I didn't ask the question or I didn't. I didn't read what you were asking. I thought you asked about um, my views about somebody being in a long relationship without being com or they were supposed to be committed, which is impossible. So even if somebody's they in a relationship for five years, two years. For instance, I've been in relationships for 10 years, but wasn't married. And um, this is my girlfriend. I still wasn't committed. Still wasn't committed. <laughs> Rose, okay, why pay for the cow when you can get the milk for free? Pastor Asa said, dairy free. Paul says, this was great. You need to have an open forum with this topic. Yes, I do. Okay. If the relationship ends, at least come out with something more than a happy meal. That's what I say, man. If if I'm if I'm giving up the puss, if I'm a female. And you done had the puss at least three times from me. My bank account look good. I ain't going to be struggling. I ain't going to be struggling for no food. I ain't going to be struggling for no clothes. And my rent going to be paid for a few months ahead of time. If I'm going to let you sniff it, smell it, touch it, squeeze it. I'm gonna have more. I'm gonna have me a business, bank account, and a wardrobe if I'm a woman. Now, those of you want to, you know, give it up and get nothing for it. What they say? That's your prerogative. But I, I, I wouldn't do it. For a man, is a man is different. Man, a man can sleep with, a man can sleep with ten women in one day, different women. But ain't no way in the world. If, cause I don't. If I'm a woman, I don't know if he has slept with somebody before he came over. 
I'm going to make sure if I'm going to be a hoe, I'm going to be a paid one. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to make sure if I'm going to be a hoe, I'm going to make sure I'm a paid hoe. All right. Because you ain't going to put no ring on it. Then you're going to put some deposits in it. <laughs> that's, all, that's all to it. You ain't going to put a ring on it. You're going to put some deposits in my account. And that's it. All right. I think that's enough now. Okay. Oh, Kevin says something. Pastor Asaph, he said, but wouldn't that be prostituting? What's worse? Giving it up for free? Or getting getting some money for it? What's worse? With the same dude too? If and it's the same dude, what's worse? And then he's somewhere else. Or he got it. You got this, you got this dream. He don't even care about your dream. Because if he did, he would invest in your dream. He doesn't even care. Like, what's worse? Giving it up for free or getting compensated? What did you say before? You said before you're on Larry Reed. What do you mean? What do you mean? You said before you're on Larry Reed. I don't know what you mean, um, Dr. Womack. There is no value where there is no investment. Oh, that's, that's true. Free is worse waste of time and money. Yeah. It's definitely waste. At least... At least be housed. Oh yeah, let me let me yeah let me let me get off. You're right. Yeah, at, at least be housed. At least have your rent paid for. Uh, I know I know some women. They just giving it up and they ain't getting nothing. They got to struggle to get, to pay the to pay the bills, and the guy just comes and just screw them. Okay, some have had sex before marriage, then get married and last longer than those that wait. Okay, what's the, what's what's your point? I don't get it. Some have actually had sex before marriage, yeah, and then get married and last longer. Now, how do you know they had sex before marriage? How do you know that? And that they get married and last longer than those who wait. How do you know that? How do you know that? Okay. I know couples personally. Okay, you should find out how's it working for them. How's that working for them? Yeah. How's their relationship? And are they do they have a relationship with God as well? How's that how's that relationship working for them? Paul says, I think he means bishops, men, the cloth don't have conversations like this. Okay. They have drove. They test drove the car. <laughs> they talking about themselves. <laughs> All right. I got to go. I got to go now. God bless you. Hope you got something. Let me tell you something. Everything you want is in the word of God. You got to go there. It's working great for them. Yes, they are people of God. A lot of, Okay. If it's working for them, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If it's working great for them. I kind of beg to differ, though, because uh, a lot of people tell you stuff, but unless you're living on the inside, y'all, because I can't tell you how many people I counsel, they tell people stuff on the outside, <laughs> the inside is something totally different. 
There's a lot of psychological stuff to take place when you're having sex and you're having sex with a lot of people or you're having sex even before marriage and then you come into marriage, a whole lot of psychological stuff. And until you actually commit and get married, y'all don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But it's a, it's a lot. It's a lot. Okay. Yeah, and it's great if they're doing well. Like uh, Pastor Asa said, if that's true, a lot of times we don't know because we're on the outside, you know? Oh, no, I just said, you didn't hear me. You got to tune up those ears. I said, if it's working for them, that's great if that's the truth. But in my prophetic experience, I've counseled a lot of people who actually it didn't work out great even though they act like it was great, okay? And I, I've counseled thousands of people, and a lot of them tell you the truth, that our elders and pastors and bishops, uh, when they're behind closed doors, all right? So I'm just telling y'all, there's a right way, and I've done it the wrong way. And all I'm saying is, if you do it God's way, you avoid a whole lot of mess. And my whole point, as I'm getting ready to go for real this time, I wish I would have done it God's way. Originally, I would have saved a lot of time and did a whole lot of things differently and built up a whole lot of stuff if I would have did it God's way. As uh, Pastor Asaph said, a lot of acting in and out of church, and that is so true. You know, people tell you, because everybody want to look good and don't want you to know their, their crap. Um, I have been through so much stuff, I don't care what you know. You know, I, I'm very transparent. I just want to help somebody, and I'm be honest with y'all. When you do it God's way, it's the right way. There's a lot of stuff I didn't do God's way and had to learn the hard way, and I could have learned the smart way if I, if I had taken the complete advice of my dad and done things the way I was instructed to, but I had to figure out on my own and see a lot of, I had to go through a whole lot of struggles and stuff. Um, and it's just should, I just should have did it God's way. So if people said that uh, they did it the opposite of God's way and it works, praise the Lord. If that's true, praise the Lord. That's great. Um, from my experience, again, prophetically dealing with folks, you got to do it God's way. All right. Everybody have a good night. Blessings. Oh no, you don't have to be, you don't have to be a member to receive counseling. Um I only think I don't think there's a member on here <laughs> anyway. Um no. Um you could just you you could email me bishop at bishopwomack.com. God bless you all. Peace and blessings. <laughs>